Hi right guys, welcome back. In this video we're going to fix the grout pattern. So we're going to build uh, some grout that will fill in these gaps here and give us the, the look of, uh, you know, of a proper constructed brick wall. So in order to see this effect working, uh, what I want to do is come all the way back up to our delete small parts node here put the display flag on there and I'm just going to selectively remove some bricks from here by just dialing up that remove uh, value just so we've got sort of an interesting shape to work with so we can see what our grout pattern uh, is doing so something like that and then I'm going to come all the way down to my for each and let that just calculate that for a second um, there we go so we've got an interesting pattern here to build on our on our grout work Okay, also what I want to fix that I've noticed is that we've got some slightly different sized UV islands here, um, which we don't want because when we apply texture maps to that, we'll get this weird kind of scaling effect going on on the texture map. So we can fix that quite easily with a, a texel density node. Okay, so this allows us to specify how many pixels is equal to uh, the UV space, essentially. So asset resolution, will set that to be... 10,000 by 24 and we'll scale the UVs to match the texel density okay and then we don't want to do a UV layout so we'll uncheck that and if we put the display flag on here and then plug that into our output and let Houdini calculate that again I think what we'll find is yeah there we go we've got a much nicer even distribution of those UV coordinates nothing's jumping out at me as being too kind of too much bigger than other pieces or smaller than other pieces so that's um, kind of looking a little bit better there and also we can reference this texel density value in other assets as well so all our assets are using the same texel, res uh, texel density whenever we use texture maps which is obviously best practice so for this grout this is really hacky uh, a hacky way to do it but <laughs> it seems to work and it's quite fun i'm going to put down bear with me a second uh, I forgot the name of the node. It's remesh to grid node. Okay, and just plug that in. And what this is going to do is just going to calculate kind of a blob. All right, <laughs> it's just going to calculate a blob of geometry based on an input, um, and we can use that essentially. So let's just put down a color node just so we can see what we're working with. And then we'll give it sort of a slightly orange tint so we can sort of see what we're working with. Okay. And there's tons of parameters we can play with here and also pass to the end user. The division size you can play around with. I think I had mine set to 0 0.5. So you get quite a lot of resolution there. You can even start to see the brickwork pattern coming through. Um, and also this dilate and erode is really cool to play with because you can kind of selectively grow and shrink. Um, so let's just temporarily merge that back into our main stream with our brickwork. And there you can see the effect. If we come back to the remesh grid and just play with that dilate erode parameter, you can see we start to get an interesting kind of grout effect that sort of ties the wall together uh, and also you get these cool bits kind of spilling out that sort of look like you know old grout work that's kind of still resting on the wall and we'll apply a separate texture map to this uh, it's like a, a grouty gravelly type texture so we get you know again that sort of different uh, look to our brick um, so we will call that grout and we'll give it that yellow color that we've been working with. Also, this tint value here will be useful because we may want to tint our grout texture map. So we'll call that tint grout and give that the yellow. Obviously this needs to have some UV coordinates. So we'll just put down a UV unwrap. There we go. So UV unwrap has done a great job of um, giving us some nice neat coordinates. Um, we can take advantage of this texel density node here. So I'm going to hold down Alt, just click and drag a copy. And that forces we do need to click again. Thanks. Uh, I'm just going to disconnect that and then plug that in after our unwrap. Okay. 
And so we're setting it to the same texel density as our brick wall, just so all our texture maps are nicely aligned. All right, so when we come down to the bottom and just sort of give the UV coordinates an eyeball, make sure nothing is standing out to us. Okay, um, and if you don't want to see your UV coordinates, if you're done with them, you can sort of turn off this little display port viewport button here, show UV coordinates. And there we go, that orange color is horrible. So let's just go with something <laughs> more like that. Okay, and there you go. You can see um, it's filled in the bricks and it's like, I, it's tied it all together a little bit more. Um, play around with this dilate and erode. You can get some quite in interesting effects on different looks. And it plays very nicely with our other noise parameters that we've, uh, that we've, we've built in there. So we're progressing along nicely. Okay, so what's left to do with our network that's kind of growing a bit, um, it's kind of growing a bit now. There are other features I want to add, like the ability to subtract bricks away based on a volume. So we've got that left to do. And then other things like we need to build the digital asset and add all these parameters that we've been collecting and just run some tests to make sure it's user friendly. Okay, so that's what the next couple of videos will be about. How do we bundle up an asset like this and make sure that we could give it to um, say like a, a layout artist or someone on, who we're working with on a project who might not be you know hugely familiar with Houdini so we need to make sure that the digital asset is as user friendly as possible uh, so I'll show you a few techniques in how we can do that and we'll do that in the next video so thanks